So service-based businesses generally scale around a few different things. You've got your people, which in an emerging market is super difficult to scale, uh, or your talent, um, your clients, or the market. So what does that mean? With the market, you're seeing either macro or microeconomic shifts where something you do or offer is unique to everybody else. And the market literally moves to you, either because of price, because of differentiation, um, maybe it's because what you do um, has been highly sought after for years and there's only so much of it in the market right now. So um, that's generally what you're going to see in an emerging market. Um, the next is going to be talent. Um, I think talent is a huge driver of growing a service business. So if you can recruit the right people um, for the right price at the right time and you're able to go into the market and resell their time, and their, their work, then you're gonna be able to grow your business. Um, and the last is clients. So it's very difficult to grow exclusively based on clients. Um, as someone who's grown a services business myself, there are times where we've depended on clients to grow the business and for business development, either uh, a regional client that wants to go global or a regional client that wants to diversify their services and we have the capability and the manpower to do that. Um, so. When you scale with a client, it is more volatile and it's more dangerous, but it's also a lot more lucrative. I think the big thing that you need to do if you're scaling, for instance, with a client or with talent, is make sure that communication is really, really high. Because if you're scaling with marketplace factors driving your business, um, there's only so much insight and there's only so much information you can get when you make your decision but when you're working with other people you can ask them hey we're gonna we're gonna scale up this part of our business um, to match your needs that we're seeing what type of guarantees do I have that this is going to be a part of your business in three years um, and vice versa when you bring people on especially into emerging markets say you recruit talent from outside of the region or outside of the country you need to have a frank conversation with them and say your work is currently tied to this client or these clients and we don't know how long this marketplace is going to exist and we don't know how long we're going to defend this price in the marketplace so having those conversations is going to make it a lot easier and you're not going to have to change your business model as much that said um, through those conversations you might get information like oh we're, we can only guarantee you this business for a year right when you get have business guaranteed for a year you might go to the talent and say, we want to work on a contract basis instead of a, a permanent basis. I think a lot of marketplaces scale really elegantly, but are also services. So you look at something like Uber, um, which is finding a gap in the marketplace and then scaling globally. Um, they're leaning on you know, underutilized time and capital investment in town cars and luxury vehicles. I think that's super bright. Um, Airbnb is also a great example of kind of a, a services marketplace where um, the services, you're exchanging your house for, for cash. Um, that's scaled really well. And professional services, obviously everybody's going to point to consulting. They're going to point to um, a lot of really traditional services businesses, um, lawyers, uh, accountants, the big five, all that type of stuff. Um, but I think something that you could look at, and I think uh, you know, Blue Ocean Strategy really nails this, is a services business doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional one. There's a lot of non-traditional ones, and the case study that they use is Cirque du Soleil as someone that said, hey, we're going to glo go globally, we're going to be one part kind of high-end luxury experience and one part circus and we're gonna package something up that no one's ever seen before. So, um, and that's a global phenomenon. So, you, there's a lot of different ways you can look at it. You can look at it within the pro professional services realm, you can look at it within the marketplace realm, uh, or you can look at it with something that's kind of non-traditional like Cirque du Soleil. I think regionally, you see a lot of folks lean on travel. Um, so the, the, the travel brands in the region have, have kind of done their best to scale. Uh, you see a lot of people lean on F and B, um, but within like the pure play startup space, I think one of the better regional examples would maybe be like Diwani uh, and what they've done, uh, creating content, creating uh, you know original video content, um, going and connecting the brands to their audiences um, in, on a regional basis, uh, kind of out of thin air. That's a really really interesting way to scale in the region. And what's interesting about it as well is. 
it doesn't have to be purely regional because it has such a strong Arabic audience. Um, it can go global. You can target the diaspora throughout the world. So I think they're a great regional example. I mean, all the things you should avoid doing in, 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 a, in a pure play services business, you kind of have to do at times. So that's hiring before you have the business, right? We just hired three people um, on paper. Super difficult to justify that. If I was working for a large multinational um, or they were my partner and a majority partner, they would really question these hires. But I know in the marketplace that sometimes the best bet is to take talent out of the market to indoctrinate them, to bring them in and really onboard them in a more casual, like, yeah, lower stress manner. But a lot of popular advice will tell you don't do that until you have business. So um, I would say it goes both ways. Selling, you know, hiring people before you can sell them in or before you can justify the headcount is, is kind of a cardinal sin. The other thing is um, putting yourself above your client. In a services business, your client or your market um, or your audience is always number one. So. You're seeing this a lot with like the backlash in Uber. Um, you've seen this from time to time when, on, on marketplaces like eBay where they've gotten massive pushback from sellers or um, anytime fees are involved, uh, you'll see that people will take advantage of that and they'll forget that their marketplace or their consumers or the people that they serve are their number one priority. So when you forget that, right, and you put yourself first or you think that you bring something above and beyond what they bring, you lose sight of focus, right? Like you, you, you lose sight of the bigger picture. And in the services businesses, uh, in service businesses, you're literally um, a servant, right? You're working for other people, and in exchange for that time and work, you're getting money. So always putting their needs first. Listening, I think, is also something critical in services business. So, um, and, and that goes across the board. 